of the Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change, joined with the Committee on Finance, Committee on Agriculture, Food, and Agrarian Reform to order. Good morning and welcome to this virtual public hearing. Uh, I wish to acknowledge the presence of, uh, do we have a quorum? <laughs> Where are the senators? Can um, we start this without even one senator? Uh, since this is a public hearing point and it's on more on gathering based on Senate rules, but, um, the committee can conduct a public hearing with one senator at the meantime, while waiting for the other senators to arrive. Oh, who is, who is the like senator me. present? Uh, as, of the the moment, senator present? as of the moment, as of the moment, Congress, uh, Senator Subiri and Senator uh, Revilla, because they are the uh, the author of the bills in the Senate. You better uh, call them. Pwede bang ako lang? Yeah. Yes, po. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Information, information, and data gathering, po. Okay. Because so, the action, uh, the decision of the committee will be based on the committee reports to be routed for signatures of the members. Okay, but you better call them, na lang, so that yes, they will be present. Okay. Yes, ma'am. At this point, let me recognize our committee secretary, Maria Clarinda Mendoza to acknowledge a resource person and other invited guests. Good morning, everyone. The Committee on Environment and Natural Resources and Climate Change, together with the Committees on Finance and on Agriculture, Food and Agrarian Reform, would like to acknowledge the following resource persons. From the Biodiversity Management Bureau, we have Forrester Francis Feliciano from the National Mapping Resource and Information Authority. We have Forrester Beata Batadlan and Angel P. Cinco. From the Department of Tourism, we have Director Warner Andrada and Regional Director Hermi Aguas. Uh, from the Department from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Region 1, we have Attorney Crisaldi Barcelo. From the Mines and Geosciences Bureau, we have Attorney Danilo Uikiang, together with Attorney Josephine Sescon, um, Mr. Marshall Mateo, and Mr. Chodorico Marquez. From the Forest Management Bureau, we have Assistant Secretary Marshall C. Amaro, also the um, OIC director of the FMB, together with um, Forrester Kenneth Taliga. From the Land Management Bureau, we have Attorney Emeline Talabies. From the Department of Agrarian Reform, we have Undersecretary Luis Mayrado Pangulayan. From the Local Government of Bayambang, Pangasinan, we have Mayor Cesar Kiambao. Uh, we are also um, we have also would like to acknowledge the presence of representatives from the office of Deputy Speaker um, Congresswoman Rosemary Baby Arenas. That is all, Madam Chair. Uh, did you acknowledge uh, Congresswoman Ko? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, we also would like to acknowledge the committee. Also would like to acknowledge. Deputy Speaker, Congresswoman Elisa Olga Ko of um, Second District Province of Masbate. My apologies. Um, that is all, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Omsek. First in the agenda, there are two topics in our agenda for today. First in the agenda is the declaration as a protected area of the Tugbo Natural Biotic Area located in Masbate City and the municipality of Movo in the province of, of Masbate under House Bill 9488, principally authored by Representative Eliza Ko and its Senate counterpart, Senate Bill 1711 that I filed. 
Second in the agenda are the bills seeking for the reclassification of the portion of Mangabul Forest Reserve located in Bayambang, Pangasinan into agricultural land open to disposition to bona fide and long-term farmers of the areas. These are House Bill 9253, principally authored by Representative Baby Arenas, Senate Bill 1961, authored by Majority Leader Mick Subiri, and Senate Bill 2444, authored by Senator Bong Revilla. Number one, declaring the Tugbo Natural Biotic Area as a protected area under the INAIPAS Act. As a backgrounder, when I became chairperson of the committee in the 17th Congress, I vigorously pushed for the passage of Republic Act Number no. 11038 or the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System or INAIPAS Act of 2018 which strengthened the legal framework for the establishment, management, and maintenance of all designated protected areas in the country or those that are identified to be ecologically rich and biologically important public lands, that are habitats of rare and threatened species of plants and animals, biogeographic zones, and related ecosystem. The said law is a landmark because it facilitated the legislation of 94 more protected areas in addition to the 13 protected areas individually legislated under the operation of the original NIPAS law or RA 7586. It brought the country total legislated protected areas to 107 or a total of 4,382,568 hectares. However, while 107 is already a staggering number, based on the records and suitability, assess, suitability assessments, stability assess, suitability assessments by the Biodiversity Management Bureau of DNR, there are still numerous sites in the country that have yet to be given protected area status by legislative action in order to ensure their conservation. Also, while the Philippines is a biodiversity rich, it is also among the world's biodiversity hotspots or those areas experiencing high rates of habitat degradation and biodiversity loss. Thus, there are still many areas in the country such as wetlands, forests, watersheds, wildlife sanctuaries, and natural biotic areas, among others, that remain underprotected and one certain way of affording protection to this area is by designating them as protected areas under a law so that the NIPAS mechanism of protection and conservation may be applied to these areas. This is the reason why in this present 18th Congress, we have already so far passed bills covering five more protected areas under the NIPAS and the bills are now to be transmitted to the Office of the President for approval and enactment. This refer to the following protected areas. Mount Pulag Protected Landscape located in the provinces of Benguet, Ifugao, and Nueva Vizcaya. The Banao Protected Landscape in Kalinga Province. The Ritpirad Pass Protected Lang Landscape in Ilocos Sur the Mount Arayat Protected Landscape in Pampanga, and the Naga Kabasalan Protected Landscape in Sambuanga, Sibugay. A sixth bill, the Sikogon Island Wildlife Sanctuary Bill, is pending second reading in the Senate plenary, and we hope to pass it also on third reading upon the resumption of session next week. The Tugbo Natural Biotic Area under consideration today is the seventh protected area we hope to pass within this 18th Congress. Located in Masbate City and the municipality of Mobo in Masbate, the Tugbo Natural Biotic Area serves as the primary water source of the said LGUs and is home to various endemic flora and fauna including vulnerable wild bird species. And the second uh, topic natin ay yung reclassification of the portion of Mangabul Forest Reserve in Bayambang, Pangasinan 
into agricultural land open to disposition to bona fide and long-term farmers of the area. The second topic refers to the reclassification of a portion of the Mangam, Mang, Mangabul Reservation in Bayambang, Pangasinan into alienable and disposable land in order to benefit the long-term farmer occupants of the area. The way I look at it, the bill seeks to promote social justice. It is not so much about the state giving away land of public domain, but it is about setting things right as agricultural land to be alienated and disposed to the farmer occupants thereof will be the for portion that is found to be non-conforming to forest and forest land uses. We aim to strike a balance between affording social justice and the conservation or restoration of our forest ecosystem. And so with that, we, have, we hope to have a productive discussion on the measures. Uh, on that note, let us proceed with our hearing proper. We go first with the declaration of the Tugbo National Biotic Area as a protected area, or, or House Bill 9488 and Senate Bill 1711. Our comsec may prompt the chair on who will speak one by one. So may we call on the ComSec to recognize who are going to speak on this topic. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, for the topic of declaring the Tugbo Natural Biotic Area. Uh, first speaker will be Deputy Speaker Elisa Ko, being the author of um, principal author of House Bill 9488, to be followed by the Biodiversity Management Bureau and the National Mopping and Resource Information Authority, and from the DOTPA, with regards to the tourism area of Tugbo Natural Biotic Area. Okay, we recognize them now. Please introduce yourself and make your uh, speech. Uh, Madam Chair, good morning. Yes. Uh, before I give my sponsorship speech, let me correct our concept. I am not a deputy speaker. I'm the chairperson of the Committee on Rural Development. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to everybody uh, who is uh, present in this uh, uh, public hearing, I'd like to start with uh, recognizing the richness of the biological resources, both flora and fauna, that are native and distinct to the watershed forest reserve, as well as their aesthetic and ecological importance, a parcel of this land located in the city of Masbate in the municipality of Mobo, in the province of Masbate, is hereby declared as a protected area with the category of natural biotic area and shall be referred to as a natural, ah, the Tugbo natural biotic area. As such, the state shall ensure its conservation, protection, management, and rehabilitation of, this, of the area, especially against uh, human harm. It is likewise recognized that the effective administration of this area is possible only through cooperation among national government, local government, concerned land government organizations, private entities, and local communities. The use and enjoyment of this area must be consistent with the principles of biological diversity and sustainable development. Hence, the approval of this bill is being sought. Thank you, Madam Chair. And good morning again. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker Ko. We proceed with the next speaker. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Francisco Feliciano, the uh, officer in charge for the Protected Area Resource Management and Protection Section of the National Parks Division of the Biodiversity Management Bureau. So with regards to Tugbo Natural Biotic Area, this is declared as Tugbo Watershed Forest Reserve through Presidential Proclamation Number 369 on May 2, 1994, under the Management Authority of the Forest Management Bureau. This is not an initial component of the NIPAS, but managed as a protected area by San Romobo Masbate DNR. Approximately 247 hectares, 170 hectares in Masbate City, 77 hectares in the municipality of Mobo Masbate. 
located in Barangay Tugbo, in the municipality of Maspati City, and Barangay Tugbo and Tobon in the municipality of Mobo, all in the province of Maspate. Runoff moves its ways towards the creek, rivers, and streams before flowing into the Masbate Pass. The area is drained by Tugbo River, the main river system in the southeast, and by Matungao Creek in the northeast. Flora include the pericarp species, such as red lawaan, white lawaan, magpikan, apitong, premium species like nara and dao. Other important species are toog and katmon. Fauna includes the woodward's frog, which is a Philippine endemic. Other species of fauna found in the uh, proposed protected area are Philippine long-tailed macaque, large flying fox, reticulated python, monitor lizard, Philippine cocon, ramini kite, Philippine hanging parrot, and Philippine hawk owl. For this reason, for establishing Tugbo Natural Biotic Area as a protected area, Tugbo Natural Biotic Area is considered as the primary water source of the city of Masbate and municipality of Mobo. With rich remnants of biodiverse flora and fauna, okay. including canopy and residual forests and various endemic species of birds, amphibians, and reptiles. Tugbo still holds several species of birds such as the Philippine bulbul, blue-headed pantail, and Philippine copal, unique to the West Visayas, and may stand as the last refuge for endemic species recorded. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Um, we interrupt the hearing to recognize uh, Senator Bong Revilla, who will provide us the quorum in this hearing. Uh, would you like to uh, make a manifestation, Senator Revilla? No, ma'am. Uh, I will just listen for a while. Okay, thank, thank you. you for coming and providing us the quorum. We now go to the next speaker. Uh, Please uh, introduce yourself and make your uh, speech. Um, good morning, ma'am. The next speaker will be from the National Mapping and Resource Information Authority. We have Forrester Beata Batadlan. Ma'am Beth? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm representing National Mapping and Resource Information Authority, or NAMRIA. I am Ms. Beth Batadlan. Uh, with regards to the technical description indicated in House Bill 9488, we found it correct and there is no error. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, we go now to the next speaker. Um, I think that will be the last speaker for the topic of um, Tugbo Natural Biotic Area. Po. So with that, uh, we're satisfied. So uh, uh, our uh, deputy speaker from Asbate, uh, Congresswoman Ko, uh, will make the committee report and will bring your bill to the plenary. Thank you very much. We go Thank now you. to the... Okay. Thank you. We go now to the next topic, the mga bull po. Yung mga bull, uh, uh, the, the, the classification of the portion of mga bull forest preserve in Bayambang, Pangasinan into agricultural land open to disposition to bona fide and long-term farmers of the area. So we recognize the, now the speakers can the committee sec recognize them and let them speak one by one to support the bill. Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. For the topic on the reclassification into agricultural land, a portion of the Mangabal Forest Reserve, we have a Deputy Speaker Rosemary Baby Aranas, who is the principal author of House Bill 9253, followed by Mayor Cesar Kiambo of uh, Bayambang, Pangasinan, to be followed by Assistant Secretary Marshall Amaro of the Forest Management Bureau. Next is Attorney Emeline Talabis from the Land Management Bureau and Red uh, Regional Executive Director Crisaldi Barcelo and from the Mines and Geosciences Bureau, Attorney Danilo Oikieng. 
and last will be the Department of Agrarian Reform. Uh, may we now hear po the, from Deputy Speaker Arenas, ma'am? Madam Chair? I think, uh, 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 before they start speaking, I think uh, the one represented, representing the DAR would be Under Secretary for Legal Affairs, Yusek Luis Pamulayan. I saw him. On, on yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, thank you. Okay, so we hear from uh, the representative of uh, Deputy Speaker Arenas. Uh, Madam Chair. Good morning, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, uh, first of all, may I apologize because the internet here in the barangay is not so strong, so I could not open my video. Um, good morning, Madam Chair. I am here in my personal capacity as a, a constituent of the third district and as the former representative. May I be I may I be allowed to represent Deputy Speaker Rosemary Baby Arenas? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the Mga Bol Lake Reservation is a 2,059 hectare tract of land located in Barangay San Gabriel II, Bayambang, Pangasinan. In the old times, Mga Bol Lake was submerged in water during rainy seasons where fishery thrived in a farmland during dry seasons. Over the period of about 60 years, the forested portions were converted to agricultural cultivation and the constant accumulation of silt from Agno River and Lahar from Mount Pinatubo has deceased the fishery area into little more than a few shallow creeks during the dry season. At present, practically the whole area has become farmlands and the site of residential houses comprising eight barangays. The actual use of the land remains agricultural, filled by farmers whose tenure is not secured and could not fully utilize the potential of this land. The natural conditions of the area has given rise to farmers or tenants planting, toiling, but such contributions to the economy are not given due recognition. Moreover, the local government of Bayambang, after being stripped of its usufactory over the property, has lost a source of revenue which could otherwise be utilized in delivering basic services. With the municipality having only 16,800 hectares to its name, Unlocking this would be a great help to its local finance, autonomy, and determination. The reservation was designated by the Bureau of Land Survey as insular public domain. In 1993, it was declared a public reservation through Act Number 4041, which awarded the rights to the municipality of Bayambang. During the 9th Congress, the Committee on Agri Agrarian Reform conducted an inquiry in aid of legislation on the agrarian unrest affecting about a thousand farming families in the area. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources declared the municipality's rights determined in 1993 under Article 605 of the Civil Code, which this allows use of fractuary rights to last in excess of 50 years. When the regional trial court decided in favor of the ENR's claim, the municipality appealed the decision and the case has remained pending until the present time. In order to put an end to legal issues in, involved and agrarian unrest in the area and to promote peace, security, and greater production within the community, consistent with the law and the requirements of environmental conservation, this representation strongly reiterates the proposal of the Committee on Agrarian Reform of the Ninth Congress to undertake the following reclassification of the Mangambol Reservation into alienable and disposable land of the public domain, two, distribution of the land ownership among the bona fide and long term farmers and occupants therein, three, granting the use of frac over the remaining creeks in the area to the municipality of Bayambang, which, however, shall be managed and developed by the farmers, occupants themselves, upon the payment of reasonable compensation to the municipality and for explicit repeal of Act Number 4041. In this spirit, um, Madam Chair, I hope this bill, bill will be passed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. We now hear from the next speaker. Um, Madam Chair, our next speaker will be Mayor Cesar Kemba of the Municipality of Bayambang, Pangasinan. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, good morning to everyone, to all the resource 
persons uh, around us today. And before that, I would like to uh, express our uh, thanks and gratitude to the sponsors of the House Bills, uh, Congresswoman Rachel Arena, uh, Baby Arenas and Congressman uh, Bersaga of Cavite, and to Senators uh, Bong Revilla and Senator Mick Suviri for sponsoring this bill. And uh, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to express an honor and privilege to appear before this August body to represent our farmers who had been tilling and toiling the land called Mangabol. The problem with Mangabol dates back to my childhood when I heard that there were many of those who had given their lives in the land disputes and conflicts over the vast riches it offered. There was even a legend that Mangabol was once the source of armed conflict between Bayambangenos and the Tarlakenos, in which the people of Bayambang won and claimed the area for its bountiful, fertile soil. Today, there might have been no bloodshed, but the dilemma remains on the meets and bounds of farmlands and who owns it. The farmers had wanted the land to be distributed to them as early as the Ninth Congress to stop the long festering agrarian unrest. We therefore beseech the Honorable Body to heed the call of our farmers to declare Mangabol Lake Reservation as alienable and disposable for agricultural purposes only, so it may be distributed to the bona fide and long-term farmers who had spent their lives developing the land into productive land of corn, onions, and other cash crops. More than this, the government will also benefit considering the land's value be entered in the registry of properties subject to real property taxes and the torrent system, which ultimately redounds to the benefit of the townspeople. So, Madam Chair, the area being requested by the municipality of Bayambang as stated in the bill, uh, we defer the sound judgment of this honorable body and the Senate on the uh, approval of this uh, Senate bill. And hopefully it will be become into law. Sana, sana all. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor Kiambao. Uh, now we hear the other speakers. Mute ka iha. Sorry. Um, for the next speaker po, we have Assistant Secretary Marshall Amaro uh, representing the Forest Management Bureau. Sir, Sir Amaro, you can start ka po. Thank you very much and uh, thank you, Honorable Madam Chair, the Honorable Members of the Senate and the House of Representatives who are with us uh, in this uh, hearing, uh, distinguished members uh, of the uh, Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change, uh, our uh, Honorable Mayor uh, of uh, Bayambang, Honor uh, Mayor uh, Kembao, uh, members of the DNR family uh, in attendance uh, who are also serving as resource persons, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. If uh, you would allow us, Madam Chair, we have a short uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, if you would allow us to share uh, so that uh, the committee is properly guided. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Chair. May I ask the staff to uh, share our presentation? Thank you. Basically, this uh, presentation would uh, cover the... Uh, House Bill Number 9253, originally House Bill 4088, uh, Senate Bill Number 244 uh, by the Honorable uh, Senator Bong Rebilia, and uh, the Senate Bill Number 1961 by the Honorable Mick Subiri. So basically, we uh, provided uh, for the comments uh, in our earlier communication, but uh, we would be very glad to share this with everyone uh, uh, in this preceding uh, PowerPoint presentation. Next slide, please. 
So basically, the Mangabol Reservation, which was already discussed by the earlier speakers in uh, part and in full, covers uh, 2,059 hectares and located in San Gabriel, Pangasinan. This might have been the uh, original uh, uh, site, uh, considering that this uh, proclamation, uh, which uh, declared this area uh, was in 1933. It was uh, declared as an insular public domain by the then Bureau of Lands and uh, used to be partly forest and partly lake. So in 1933, it was declared a public reservation under ACA number 4041, which awarded the usufructory rights to the town over the fishery area that was then referred as Fisher Mangabol Fishery Reservation. Next slide, please. So basically, this is the Aka uh, Mangabol Reservation, uh, which was uh, approved in January 21, uh, 1933. Next, please. So we now go to the comparison of the House Bill. Uh, basically, House Bill 9253, which I mentioned as uh, formerly 4088 and Senate Bill 2444. Uh, we uh, compared uh, these two because the technical descriptions are uh, almost the same and the boundaries are closer, but uh, not exactly uh, one and the same to the existing forest lands based on the land classification map, which we will be showing uh, in a little while. Uh, on the latest developments uh, in this area, we have 11.29 uh, hectares, uh, which were reforested uh, by the regional office uh, uh, through the National Greening Program in 2013 and 2016. Next, please. For the Senate Bill 1961, uh, uh, it has a different technical description than the two uh, bills, the House and the uh, uh, Senate version, and has an error of closure, uh, which uh, is quite significant, but uh, located entirely within alienable or disposable lands. Next, please. So we now show uh, the comparison of uh, the two House bills. So basically, uh, House Bill 9253 and uh, Senate Bill 2444 are, is uh, the one uh, on the right uh, within the green uh, colored area. And SB 1961 is the one on the left. So as you would see, and based on the legend, we have uh, the... Uh, uh, 1961 uh, totally within alienable or disposable as earlier uh, mentioned and uh, the one I believe which is a uh, subject of our this further discussion is the uh, bill uh, of nine, House Bill 9253 and 244. So basically that's the representation as far as the land classification map of, uh, of the NAMRIA, which we used in our uh, geographic information systems as basis for analysis. Next. So this provide, uh, we have superimposed uh, the uh, technical descriptions of the bills concerned over the uh, original land classification map. And uh, truth to form, we have uh, the validation that the two bills, uh, which are uh, uh, almost the same, uh, falling within uh, forest land or timber land uh, with an area of uh, over 2,000 hectares, to be exact, 2,062.6 hectares. And the one uh, on the left, uh, totally uh, within A and D. So this is uh, an overlay uh, of the proposed uh, areas uh, over this uh, land classification map, which is in the file uh, of the DNR agencies concerned. Next map, please. Next slide, please. Sorry. So this is also an overlay of the two uh, maps. So you might see here only House Bill 9253. But House Bill 9253, as I mentioned, is the same as that of 2444. So we just have a uh, House Senate Bill number 1961 uh, being compared. So you will see it being overlaid on uh, the actual uh, uh, land cover status uh, by way of Google. And you would see that uh, in both proposed uh, areas under the uh, concerned uh, or pertinent bills, uh, you have uh, mostly uh, agricultural tracts. 
uh, or ri uh, rice lands uh, with uh, very minimal areas devoted for fisheries, uh, which uh, I believe uh, has been used as basis for the clamor to have this already released for alienable or disposable lands. Next, please. So basically, uh, the, the uh, bills which are uh, uh, which have similar technical description uh, has been considered by the bureau, uh, but uh, our concern is, uh, as you would see later on, and this we would like to seek the uh, uh, indulgence of the uh, uh, their bureau in the DNR, that of the uh, Mines and Geosciences Bureau, because uh, we use as a reference. Uh, gu existing guidelines in determining areas which we would recommend for release uh, from uh, public land status to alienable or disposable for uh, relevant uh, purposes. So basically, we have seen in the analysis that uh, there is serious concern based on the two major uh, documents that we use as reference, that of uh, DNR Administrative Order 2008-24, which will be discussed uh, uh, in uh, detail a little later, and that of uh, memorandum dated 25-2012. So basically, our concern is uh, that of the areas uh, subject to of our discussion being subjected to potential uh, flooding uh, as, uh, as a result of geohazard mapping by the MGB, as I've already mentioned. Next, please. So this is uh, 2008-24, and it provides for uh, uh, the uh, consideration of the areas if these are geohazard uh, areas, uh, and therefore not uh, to be recommended for release because of uh, the uh, potential threat to lives and properties that may happen when we are subjected to the triggers of these geohazards. Next, please. We also have this uh, memorandum, as I mentioned in that uh, earlier slide, uh, that provides for uh, these geohazard areas where uh, areas of high risk uh, cannot be uh, recommended for alienation. So I guess there is still flexibility for the low susceptibility or moderate susceptibility. But as far as high risk category, I guess as far as the DNR guidance is concerned, uh, we cannot uh, compromise. Next, please. So this would provide for, uh, I hope uh, this is clear with everyone uh, in, in the meeting. Uh, this is the geohazard map as far as uh, the uh, House Bill 9253, Coma Senate Bill uh, 2444 is concerned. As you would see, uh, the uh, purple or blue area, uh, I don't know the resolution, is uh, that for the uh, high risk. With the other ones, that of the gold or yellow, as the case may be, for the low and uh, moderate uh, susceptibility to uh, geohazards, particularly flooding. So we have superimposed the uh, uh, boundary of the Mangabol Fishery Reservation, the entire area. And you can see that uh, not all uh, could be recommended for release uh, for alienable or disposable purposes. Next slide, please. So basically, uh, this would provide for the uh, uh, other bill, uh, that of uh, the bills uh, filed uh, or sponsored by uh, the Honorable Senator Subiri, uh, SBN 1961, where uh, almost the entire area falls within high susceptibility, even if it is within A and D. So you can see that uh, in the other area, it's within timberland or public forest land. But we still have some areas that may be uh, released for alienable or disposable. But in this case, even if it is A&D, I guess it is areas uh, characterized with high susceptibility to flooding. Next, please. Now, basically, our final recommendation, I guess, uh, based on the uh, slides that we have shown to uh, this uh, uh, August body, uh, we would uh, have this comparison, which are quite clear. Uh, and uh, first, uh, while uh, we already have this uh, evaluation based on the uh, technical description provided, I think the, uh, the uh, most accurate uh, and the best thing to do is really to, to check on the ground to determine the actual meets and bounds, particularly on the areas 
which uh, are found to be uh, struggling uh, between uh, uh, high risk and low risk uh, uh, to vulnerability uh, vulnerability to floods and uh, to flooding. So second is uh, for us to uh, consider only those with low or moderate susceptibility to flooding. And based on uh, the uh, DNR forest land boundary delineation output, this would just uh, amount to 685.05 hectares uh, as uh, identified to be non-conforming to uh, uh, forest lands and therefore may be released uh, for alienable uh, and disposable purposes, particularly for agricultural purposes as uh, being proposed in, in these uh, particular bills. So I guess, uh, next slide please. Uh, that's all with uh, the Forest Management Bureau would like to share to everyone for your consideration. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, um, ASEC Marshal Amaro. I just want to manifest that Senator Bong Rebilla just submitted his statement. Uh, and he is requesting that his written statement be inserted in the committee hearing records. Uh, so we will move that the statement of Senator Bong Revilla regarding the mga loop mga reservation be inserted into the records. Thank you very much. We hear now the next speaker. Uh, for the next speaker, Madam Chair, we have Attorney Emeline Talabies, Director of the Land Management Bureau. Um, you may proceed, Pop. Hearing. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? You go ahead, Miss Patalabis. Okay. okay. Okay, Pop. Thank you po, Madam Chair. So, magandang umaga po uh, sa ating lahat. Una-una po kay Madam Chair, Honorable Senator Cynthia Villar, uh, kay Mayor ng Bayambang, Pangasinan, um, kay Honorable ha uh, Representative uh, Elisa Ko, um, uh, sa aking mga kapwa resource persons from the DNR, uh, isang makakalikasang umaga po sa ating lahat. So maraming salamat po at uh, sa pag-imbita sa amin sa Land Management Bureau para po sa Senate hearing na ito regarding the uh, proposed bill on on the reclassification of the mga bold reservation into alienable and disposable land of the public domain. So for the record, Madam Chair, um, we have already submitted our official uh, position uh, in a letter addressed to the Honorable uh, Chairperson uh, Madam Cynthia Villar, uh, dated August 24, uh, 2021. And um, for purposes of uh, documenting the, the said position, I would like to request permission to, to reiterate or read said position paper, Madam Chair. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> so, um, this position paper is actually is a reply to your letter dated July 30, 2021, requesting for our comments and recommendations on the following House Bill and Senate Bill. Uh, first, House Bill number 9253 and Senate Bill number 1961. So we did not have uh, the, 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 the other version, House Bill number 2444, mentioned by Asak Amaro, uh, was not sent to us, so our comment only pertains to these two versions. Uh, so this office supports the reclassification of timberlands into alienable and disposable lands, as this is one of the most viable solutions of the government to provide lands to the, to the landless and ensure security of tenure to the actual occupants of these lands to spur economic growth and development. Uh, the Philippines has an estimated total land area of about 30 million hectares. I just want to, uh, can I intercede, uh, Ms. Yes, Palabi? We're not yes. talking of, uh, uh, we're talking about how many hectares will be converted to alienable. We are not talking of whether we will convert or not. 
You have to indicate yes, how many my, how many hectares is your recommendation because the recommendation of the forest management is 685 hectares. What is your recommendation? Don't make a a, a very uh, 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 non-specific uh, recommendation, my dear. Uh, we are talking here of determining how many hectares will be converted to alienable land. So you have to talk on that. Don't make a very, uh, uh, very generalized statement. Uh, yes, Madam. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the it was just an introduction. It was just okay. to introduce the position of the Land Management Bureau, Madam Chair. Um, but uh, in general, well, we support the, the bill of uh, which aims to reclassify portions of timberland into alienable and disposable. Uh, we defer to the uh, uh, position of the NR Forest Management Bureau as to the feasibility or propriety of the reclassification thereof. Uh, considering that um, uh, the, this office, uh, together with the NR Region 1, uh, has had already conducted an assessment of the area. Uh, in fact, uh, Asek Amaro already uh, indicated in his previous presentation that uh, uh, at, le at least as more than 685 hectares is recommended for reclassification, and we defer to that. Um, uh, that is as to the area, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, so, but... With regards to the other provisions of the uh, proposed bill uh, regarding the, uh, if I may specifically mention mm. yung applicable section, uh, mm. section three of uh, the House bill and the Senate bill, which pertains to the, the mode of disposition of the land. Um, the, the House bill uh, indicates that the there shall be determination of the scheme of distribution of land to bona fide and long-term farmers and occupants their own, and that uh, a qualified person shall be issued free patent or original certificate of title as may be applicable uh, under the provisions of Republic Act Number uh, 6657 or the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law of 1998. Similarly, Senate Bill uh, num Number 1961, um, also states the same, that there shall be a scheme of distribution of the land. Uh, however, in the bill, in the Senate bill, uh, the, the determination of the scheme of distribution shall be through a committee, which shall be composed of the following representative of the DNR as chairman, a representative of the DAR as vice chairman, and the mayor of Bayambang, uh, the head of the farmers' organization, and the provincial director of the PNP as members. Also, uh, Section 4 of Senate Bill uh, states that uh, once the scheme of distribution, distribution is approved by the committee, the DNR shall give the technical description, survey maps, and similar documents to the DAR, which shall undertake the actual distribution of the land under the principles of agrarian reform and applicable provisions of the CARP, CARL, and other related laws. So, Madam Chair, um, uh, while we... We agree that there must be a scheme of distribution. Uh, siguro po, i-reconcile kung what, through what, through what, committee po ba or DNR lang. And then, um, and that the disposition thereof uh, be made under the CA, uh, Commonwealth Act 141 or the Public Land Act. So, ang suggestion po namin, uh, considering that um, DNR is the agency having primary jurisdiction over survey management and disposition of public A and the lands, um, that such disposition will be vested in the DNR. So, and it, it will be up to the DNR to determine the mode of disposition of the land to be covered their own, uh, pursuant to the provisions of the Public Land Act as amended and Republic Act 10023, the Residential Free Patent Law, whichever is applicable. So if uh, based on the uh, information, kung agricultural po yung use, it will be disposed under agricultural free patent. And if residential naman yung use and 
basta pasok siya sa requirements ng residential free patent law, the disposition shall be to residential free patent law. Uh, so that is our, and our recommendation is not to dispose it under RA 6657 or the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law. Also, Madam Chair, um, it is suggested that if it is the intention of the proponent to create a committee that shall be responsible in the identification of the beneficiaries and prioritization of the areas for distribution, a separate section in the Senate bill should be provided. And, and further, in the identification of beneficiaries, those with existing tenure instruments, if any, uh, should be given priority. And lastly, Madam Chair, uh, we, we further suggest that um, uh, in deference to the recommendation of the Forest Management Bureau, that uh, there should be harmonization of the meets and bounds of the areas to be reclassified into A and B, uh, since the the they and LMB uh, concurs that only those uh, about 685 hectares be be reclassified. Uh, we su we suggest that there will be coordination with between the NR Region One, the local government of Bayambang Pangasinan. Uh, uh, which will determine the specific areas being filled by the farmers. In any way, ito po yung main purpose ng bill na yung actually tilled and occupied by the farmers uh, uh, should be the one reclassified so that magkaroon po sila ng security of tenure. And there must also be a prospective list na rin po ng mga beneficiaries and the proposed land use of the areas that would be declared as A and B, preferably in a map. So mapakita po sa uh, hearing, siguro po sa succeeding hearing, na maipakita po through a map representation. Uh, and at the same time, taking into consideration the geohazard assessment of the area or those that are highly susceptible to flooding. So na naipakita naman po, uh, same with the position of FMD, that the determination of the area should take into consideration the geohazard assessment by the MGP. So, Madam Chair, thank you. That is the position of the Land Management Bureau. Thank you, Attorney Emeline Talabis, uh, Director Emeline Talabis. We hear now to the, uh, we give now the floor to the next speaker, DNR Region 1, Attorney Crisaldi Barcelo. Uh, thank you, po, uh, Madam Chair, and good morning to the members of the Senate, as well as the House Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change, and to all the resource persons to this uh, committee hearing. Uh, as regards uh, DNR Region 1, we, we subscribe and we concur to the earlier positions of the uh, of the FMB, FMB and LMB. Uh, Madam Chair, ano po? actually, uh, uh, the Region 1 was the one who initiated the conduct of geohazard assessment and uh, vulnerability risk assessment. And uh, this data has already been submitted to the House Committee on Environment and Natural Resources, which we adopt also as our position in the Senate Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. So, nag-conduct din po kami ng actual survey na kanina po pinag-uusapan na nagkaiba yung area ng per house bill number 9253 Ang sinasabi po doon, 2,062 hectares. And uh, Senate Bill 1961, 2,333 hectares. Very close po yung Senate, Senate Bill number 2,444 uh, na 2,059. But per actual survey conducted by Diana Region 1, last December 14 to 17, ang area po, ay 2,086 hectares. At uh, per ano po, per comment po kanina ni Asik Amaro, parang may discrepancy do sa technical description. This has been already corrected. At ito po yung uh, 
communication po sa amin ng Namria dated June 16, 2021. Dear Attorney Barcelo, this refers to your letter regarding the result of your re-verification of the technical description of House Bill Number 4088, which has an error of closure of zero. Based on the result of our plotting and review of the technical description in that data computation format, the error of closure is within the allowable limit. Hence, we recommend that you adopt the said PD in, in bearing distance format for both Senate Bill 1961 and House Bill Number 9253 and 4088. So, na-correct na po yung technical description, Madam Chair, na po, as confirmed by the NAMRIA. So, other than that, we subscribe and we concur with the position both of the Forest Management Bureau through ASEC Amaro and the Land Management Bureau through Attorney Director uh, Emily Talabis. So, thank you po, uh, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat. Uh, maraming salamat, eh, Attorney uh, Barcelo of Region 1. We now call on Attorney Danilo Uykieng of the Mines and Geosciences Bureau. Okay. Good morning, Madam Chair, and to all the members of the Committee on Natural Resources, as well as to the other resource person in this public hearing. Uh, Madam Chair, I, we would like to ask your permission if we will be allowed to present our position paper and a mm -hmm. PowerPoint presentation regarding the geohazard assessment of the subject area of the uh, House and Senate bills, uh, Madam Chair. Go ahead, uh, uh, Director. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, may I ask uh, Attorney Siscon to read the position paper and later on our chief of geology to present the powerpoint presentation thank you madam chair thank you attorney king good morning madam chair and to the honorable members of the committee and to all the resource persons uh, please allow me to read the mgp's position paper madam chair okay go ahead thank you madam chair so for mgp under Republic Act Number no. 7942 or the Philippine Mining Act of 1995, specifically Section 19B, Plantation or Valuable Crops, and Executive Order Number no. 79, Implementing Reforms, specifically Section 1C, Prime Agricultural Lands are Closed to Mining. Based on our tenement control map, there are no holders of mining rights in the area. As for the geohazard and vulnerability assessment, in summary, these are the results. First, the subject area is classified as being highly and very highly susceptible to flooding, with flood, with flood heights reaching 3 meters in some areas during extreme rainfall events. And second, the subject area is underlain by recent deposits of lahar and other sediments. This renders the area highly susceptible to erosion, which is evidenced by damages in the mitigation structures employed in the diversion channel of Agno River. Due to the above conditions, the, sub the subject area is recommended as not suitable for commercial, industrial, residential, and institutional developments. However, the low-lying areas transform into marshlands during the wet season, making them suitable for agriculture. Thus, it is further recommended that the geohazard assessment be considered in the design and planning for any development of improvements or infrastructure over the subject areas. As to the details of geohazard and vulnerability assessment, with the permission of the Honorable Chair, may we request our uh, Chief for the Land Geological Survey Division of MGB to present the details of the report, report, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney Waking and Attorney Prescott, for this opportunity, opportunity to present the geohazard and also to Madam Chair. 
Ayabisa Manzano, I'm the Chief Geologist of the Last Geological Survey Division of the Andes Scientific Bureau. If I may be allowed to, to share my screen, I can better present the air, the data uh, in the PowerPoint presentation form, if it will be allowed, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Okay. Can you see my presentation now? No, not yet. Uh, uh Emily, wait. I cannot uh, show my presentation. Anybody? Share. I think there's something wrong. Maybe we can request them to submit na lang. Here. Can you do it? Oh. Ah, ito na. Okay. So this presentation uh, will focus on the geohazard, the geology, and the natural processes that are ongoing in the proposed area and some portions of the neighboring areas in close proximity to the proposed site. And these are essential information to come up with an informed decision on the recollectification of the area. Ah, Emily, it's not moving. So this body area, the proposed area is located um, 32.4 kilometers south of the Bagupan and is mainly on a flat topography and approximately 18 meters above sea level. Okay, and as mentioned, it is underlain with sediment, detrital deposits of sand to gravel sites, unconsolidated material, and some of the hard deposits. The groundwater level is very shallow and most of the time, especially during uh, rainy season, uh, the area is waterlogged. Um, specifically, it is overlaid by sand and silt pipe sediments from different sources ranging from nearby barangays and municipalities to those areas cut across by the big river system, the Agno and Tarlac River, further away. Okay, in terms of tectonics, um, based on the active fault map of Evolve, the nearest active fault to San Gabriel is a trace of East Tambales Fault. It's an active fault. It's quite far, but the, since the area is, uh, is in for high magnitude earthquake, uh, it can still be affected. Um, maybe possible uh, liquefaction because of the very shallow water level, drought water level, and the uh, size uh, of the grains, which is uniform sign and still relatively flat, although 80 meters above sea level. The lowest elevations area recorded is around eight meters above sea level. Okay, for drainage or the natural river system, Bayambang is being drained by two main river channels and one diversion channel. The latter transects the timberland and also intersects at the western periphery of the area along San Gabriel II and Paragos and exits at the river mouth further north located in Indian at the Lingayan Gulf. The meandering channel of the Agno River, where is the headwater begun at the Cordillera Highlands, transports large volume of flood water from different municipalities upstream. The diversion channel connected to the Agno River and Tarlac River coming from Tamiling, which greatly affects nearby residential and plantation areas when the river swells during heavy and continuous. So reception of confluence of many, many rivers, uh, active river channels and area flow. Okay, in terms of the Jayu hazard, um, as mentioned, uh, the lowest level flood height is 1.8 meters and more than 3 meters. Mm -hmm. Which, in terms of our susceptibility rating, could fall to, from high to very high. I think uh, you can see here pictures of flood height. 
and that is why most of the residential areas uh, uh, are in silt and they are elevated. Okay, so uh, if you will look at the map here, okay, in the proposed areas, uh, here are the land uh, location in terms of uh, critical in government infrastructures and also of the residential zone. Take note that the residential zone is on the northwest portion, probably a little bit outside of the proposed reservation, but very close to the reservation. And later on, I will show you the, the, the delineation in terms of the flood hazards. Okay, you have the elementary school, you have the commercial field, you have the application measures here, also residential zone, another residential zone, just to give you an overview of the situation and the size. Okay, so closer, you have this delineation. And as you can see in the map here, the blue, dark blue colored areas are the rate, are areas that are very high that are susceptible to very high flooding. And the uh, light um, purple uh, areas are high areas in terms of susceptibility to flood. So this is the geohazard map. I think that was what was presented early, earlier on. There are some changes in terms of rating because we are constantly updating the, our geohazard maps in terms of events as we observe that through the years um, uh, rainfall data is abnormally high. Uh, we not, cannot just rely on historical data uh, 1500 years maybe before uh, because of the climate change. The yellow areas, shaded areas are areas that are uh, low mm -hmm. to landslide. Okay, so just to give you uh, the picture of the, the site, so this is it. So the flood height, uh, based on the asset or field assessment, you can also see here mitigation measures that are destroyed. Um, there are subsidence. So, uh, if you do we do there are of course uh, there are uh, waste engineering measures, but we have to look at really to the intensity in terms of the flooding event, and uh, that uh, we have to also look into the cost because mitigation is just to uh, decrease the impacts of the geo hazard. It's not 100% uh, full um, protection and it has to be maintained and very costly. Okay, so more pictures in terms of flood heights and these are uh, interviews uh, based on historical data. This is the flooding event in 2019, as you can see, it's a really high to very high rating in terms of the flood height. In, Take uh, uh, more than three days. I think that's all that I can share, Madam Chair, and I hope that our information can provide uh, enough uh, data for your informed decision to everyone. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. I want to call now the the uh, Yusek of uh, Dar to make his presentation. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Villar. Uh, we also greet uh, Senator Revilla and the members of the House of Representatives. We would like to also greet our fellow resource persons, uh, the leaders of the concerned local government units, fellow servants in the agencies, and our partners in the private sector. Uh, good morning po uli sa lahat. We submit our position paper on Senate Bills number 1961, 2444, and House Bill number 9253. The Department of Agrarian Reform uh, supports uh, any initiative to further actualize the Agrarian Reform mandate in our Constitution. It is also stated in our Agrarian Reform laws uh, that uh, lands of the public domain that are actually devoted or suitable to agriculture shall form part of the universe of agricultural lands that can be included in the acquisition and distribution activities under the agrarian reform mandate. Uh, we look into the Magabul Reservation located in Pangasinan. The reservation was created by virtue of an act in 1933, Act 4041, 
which declared a 2,000 hectare parcel of land designated as insular public domain as a fisheries reservation and ceded use of rock thereof to the municipality of Bayambang. According to the explanatory note on the Senate Bill 1961, the forested sections of the reservation were converted to agricultural production over time, while lahar from the eruption of Mount Pinatubo and the accumulation of silt have lessened the fishery area to a few shallow creeks during the dry season. The entire reservation has become farmland and residential area comprising of eight barangays, according to the, to the bill. Due to controversies between farmers and occupants and the municipality and the lessees of the fishery reservation, the Senate bills and the House bill proposed that the entire reservation be reclassified as an agricultural land. Um, we would like to call the attention, Madam Chair of the committee, on certain legal concerns. Um, the Philippine adheres to the Regalian Doctrine, which holds that all lands of the public domain belongs to the state. The Regalian Doctrine, under Article 12, Section 3, classifies lands of the public domain into agricultural lands, forest lands, or timber, mineral lands, and national parks. While areas declared as reservations are not explicitly, explicitly listed in the Constitution as forming part of the public domain, the Supreme Court has ruled in the case of heirs of the late spouses Palanca versus Republic that in the absence of any prior classification by the state, unclassified lands of the public domain assume the category of forest lands, not open to disposition. The power to classify unclassified lands of the public domain and to reclassify those already classified is vested upon the executive department, as provided under Common Act 141 of 1936. We would like to submit uh, this observation to the, to the committee, Madam Chair, that um, the proponents of the bill must take into consideration CA 141 of 1936, which provides that the president, upon recommendation of the Secretary of Agriculture and Commerce, shall from time to time classify lands of the public domain into alienable or disposable timber or mineral. In the case of Republic versus uh, Cabrera, the Supreme Court uh, ruled that these provisions of CA 141 are clear and leave no room for interpretation. The classification, the classification of public lands into alienable and disposable mineral forest land is the exclusive prerogative of the executive department. Uh, this is also the, the position of the Supreme Court in the case of DNR versus YAP of 2008, where the Supreme Court upheld uh, Proclamation 1064 of then President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, uh, classifying the entire um, Boracay island as 40% uh, forest and 60% agricultural. Again, uh, an exercise under CA 141. In a recent decision of the Supreme Court, Duma versus Republic, the Supreme Court said that under the Philippine Constitution of 1987, the power to classify agricultural lands of the public domain into alienable and disposable lands is delegated to the president under CA 141, who may, based on sound discretion, classify agricultural lands as alienable and disposable. It is also delegated by law to the DNR secretary, who of course cannot redelegate the same to his subordinates. As it is only the president of the DNR who may classify as alienable disposable lands of the public domain, an applicant for land registration must prove that the land sought to be registered has been declared by the president or DNR secretary as alienable. Um, the Supreme Court uh, in the same case cited the case of Navy officers versus Republic, which says that lands of the public domain classified as reservations for public or quasi-public uses are non-alienable and shall not be subject to disposition, although they are by the general classification under Section 6 of CA 141 alienable and disposable lands, until declared open for disposition by the, by the proclamation of the President. We ask the proponents to take into consideration the provisions of laws and the current juris, juris, uh, jurisprudence on classification as an executive prerogative. Uh, in view of this, uh, we respectfully suggest that the affected farmers and occupants of the reservation seek an audience with the DNR to establish that the reservation must be reclassified as alienable and disposable. It is only when the reservation is classified as alienable and disposable pursuant to Common Act 141 can the DAR award to the farmers and occupants the land that they currently occupy under the CARP, our Comprehensive Grant Reform Program. Uh, this has been embodied in our position paper, which I've already submitted uh, to your office, Madam Chair. Uh, our okay. for your consideration Paul. I just want to make a comment that if we pass this law 
and then it will be signed by the president. If we pass this bill and it will be signed by the president, in effect, the president is uh, approving the conversion. So it's the same thing. Because this will pass through the president. If he doesn't like this, he will veto the bill. So I think we, if we pass this bill and then submit it to the president and the president will sign, then it's, it will be fulfilling the legal requirement. And I think the conversion is being uh, to 80 of 285, 685 hectares is being recommended by DNR as based from their position paper they submitted today. So I just want to make that manifestation. So with that, we are fulfilling the requirement, okay? So we want now to hear the two farmer beneficiaries from Mangabul, uh, okay? To make their uh, manifestations. Uh, Madam Chair, the two farmer beneficiaries uh, from the Bayambang Mangabul Forest Reservation. We have Mr. Er we have Mr. Orlando Gabriel and Mr. Crisostomo Bato. Um, they are with the Mayor Kimbao um, in the area. Okay. Magandang umaga po, Madam Chair. At uh, gusto mm -hmm. bato po ang farmer beneficiary ng mga bull uh, reservation. Uh, uh, narito po kami upang uh, ipahayag ang aming suporta sa hakbang na ginagawa po ng aming mahal na mayor. upang may bigay na po yung matagal na po namin binubungkal at tinataniman na lupa na sakop ng IPD-92. Ah, ang totoo po, pumapasok po ang mga farmers upang bumungkal ng lupa sa panahon po ng tagaraw. Ah, may dalawang cropping po Una yung main crop, pagkatapos po na anihin ng main crop, ay yon pong second crop. Pagdating po ng tag, tagulan, umuwi na po kami sa aming mga bahay, sa aming mga barangay. At bumabalik na naman lang po kami sa araw po ng tag-araw. Okay. So, himihiling po kami Nagsusumamo po sa inyo na sana po ay maibigay na po ang buong 2,059 hectares sa mga would-be farmers beneficiary po sa aming lugar. Kasi po kung 685 lang po yung maibigay ay magkakaroon po ng discontentment doon po sa mga hindi mabibigyan. Kung sana po sana, kung pwede lang po Kung po, kung po pwede lang po ay babigyan na po lahat yung mga namumungkal ng lupa doon sa mga bull area. Hinihingi po namin ito po at uh, nais po namin iparating sa inyo na kung ano man po ang tulong na may bibigyan ninyo sa amin ay susuklihan din po namin ng pagmamahal. Sa pamamagitan po ng malapit na eleksyon, maasahan po ninyo na ang suporta ng buong bayan ng Bayambang ay nasa sa inyo po. Uh, gusto ko lang sabihin sa iyo, Mano, na kung ibigay sa inyo yung 685, dihatiin ninyo yung 685. Anyway, yung matitira na 1,300, Pwede nyo rin tamnan yun kahit na hindi inyo eh. Kasi ka, pag mga wetland, pwede namang gamitin niya na ano, whatever na feasible na gawin doon. Inyo din yun. Kaya lang, it cannot be given away by the government because dangerous. Baka mamaya, eh, mabaha kayo ng husto doon. Parang binibigay sa inyo yung medyo safe kayo. 
Tapos yung behind that, pwede nyo rin gamitin, nasa inyo na rin yun, at together with DNR, pag-usapan nyo kung paano nyo pakikinabangan yung 1,300 hectares. But ako, I have a tendency na ibigay lang what is safe to you. And then, paano magdi-discontent? Di hatiin nyo ng, ano ko ilang kayo, hatiin nyo ng pare-pareho yung 685 hectares. So, kasi tayo, we follow the law. Nag-iingat din tayo. Baka masisi tayo kung kayo eh mabaha doon at mga matay kayo doon. Kami pa masisi doon. Yeah. My tendency is to follow the recommendation of the uh, DNR na ibigay sa inyo yung 685 hectares. At pag-aralan nyo, napakinabangan nyo din yung matitirang 1,300 hectares na to be ano naman by the government at makakaasa kayo na tutulong kami para maging kapakinabang sa inyo yung 1,300 hectares baka nga maging uh, ano pa yun eh uh, ano, tourist attraction and, uh, uh, magandang alam nyo creativity lang ang pagpakikinabang sa isang lugar uh, hindi, hindi kailangan maging inyo basta pakikinabangan nyo. Kasi ang dami rin ang DNR na community-based na greening program like bamboo na malaki ang pakinabang. Kami dito sa Las Piñas yung pagtatanim namin ng bamboo sa mga river, mga isman ng river ay pinakikinabangan namin by constructing a bamboo, engineered bamboo factory. Maraming ways of uh, doing it. And uh, I think uh, Uh, ang ang predisposition ko ay ibigay sa inyo yung 685 hectares at in the same manner tulungin ng DNR na pakinabangan nyo yung 1,300 hectares na matitirang forest lang sa DNR. Yun lang po. Yung susunod na magsasalita si Mr. Orlando Gabriel. Okay. Magand magandang ubaga po Madam Chair. Ang kulang lang po sa mga magsasaka po sa amin po ay eh, marami pong uh, mga barangay din po na nagtatanim doon po doon sa amin. Mga 14 barangay po ang nagtatanim sa amin na uh, sakop po ng Pangasinan. Kaya ang gusto nila po yung bang may ibigay na po lahat yung kanila dahil marami po sa amin po ang kwan magsasakang kwan po. Mahirap din po ang buhay. Kung ni magsasaka hindi makaani, walang pera po. Kaya hirap pong magsasaka sa amin po, madam. Kaya ang gusto nila po, may share na yung mga ibang lupa po doon, mga kwan. Para hindi po sila mahirapan doon sa hanap buhay po. Kasi sa amin, ma'am, magsasaka lang po. Kami lang po ang, ang hanap buhay namin, yung nagtatinim lang po, ma'am. Okay. Kaya wala po kaming magawa, kundi... Hingin na namin sana po yung pagkakataon na bibigyan nyo na po yung lupa namin sa ano, sinasaka uh, po namin, ma'am. I will ask the Department of Agriculture to help you. Okay. So, thank you for your manifestation. I wish to thank all our resource person and guests to have shared valuable information and views on the bills discussed. The committee will be forming a technical working group to fine-tune the Tugbo and the Mangabul reservation bills to be reported out by the committee. And I think there is no problem with Tugbo, but in the Mangabul conversion to Agriland, I think we should compromise and we should do it fast so that we can pass the bill before uh, our session ends. We have only... Uh, three weeks this February and another three weeks after the election. So maybe uh, your local government can cooperate with the NR so we can finalize the bill. So I will have a chance to defend it in the next six weeks in a session of the Senate. Otherwise, we will have problems. So uh, nasa sa inyo na yun kung magko-cooperate kayo to find uh, uh, what you call this... Uh, compromise in this and then hopefully I uh, I can pass it. Uh, ako, uh, nakita nyo naman, naghiring tayo kahit na break ang Congress because I want to do uh, uh, Mayor Kiambaw a favor because he is he is my colleague in the Nationalist Party. I want him to 
to be happy naman this before this election but i think uh we will do a compromise here and rest assured that if ever the land which you like to be given to you will not be given to you partly lang i will ask the department of agriculture and the dnr to help you kasi i think even if you don't own the land uh you can t- uh, take advantage of its uh, uh, wealth by doing some projects which is feasible that can be done with DNR and the Department of Agriculture. Okay, so thank you very much. The meeting is now adjourned. And uh, thank you for attending. Magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat.